okay hi pgbl week 10 in vivid color coach of south texas stabilized youtube audience hello nice to meet you so yeah, before we get into this battle and talk about any of it uh, let's get some things straight this video is very late <laughs> um i don't know if i needed to mention that or not i don't think i posted a pgbl video in like two three weeks it's late it's late 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 this is week 10 uh, we've done week 10 and week 11 and then week 12 was a forfeit. So let's explain things real quick um, If you watch the PLL video where I condensed two battles into the same battle I'd plan on doing that uh, But the footage I got for sort of week 11 was very long it Was not the same quality of footage and that it wasn't Citra. It was like a live recording So I just decided I would sort of talk about it here. Um, this is gonna be week 10 versus <laughs> How did I blink for that long? That that was awful. Okay, so week 10 is going to be versus Six Foot Hacks, coach of the Durham Dreadigans, and week 11 is going to be versus Sweet Banana Gaming, coach of the Orlando Sogaleo. Now, before we get into this, I want to explain that week 11, it, it happens, but I was going to post comment, so I was not live recording, which is kind of the usual for me now, which I don't know if it actually saves me time or costs me time. I need to figure out my life because I shouldn't I mean realistically I shouldn't have joined four leagues where uploads were mandatory that was nuts but also I had to because I love all of these leagues and all of the people in them but still that's beside the point the moral of the story is I got very behind so week 11 it, we, we don't have a video for it there was a disconnect in the middle of the game I didn't disconnect she didn't disconnect so it was just 100% Pokemon servers like after the game we were both still connected to the internet we were both still connected to Wi-Fi so it, it, I don't know it happened to me actually in my NPA I think it was week four or five I think it was week four it happened to me in my most recent NPA battle too if you've watched that video we ended up doing it on showdown because there was just a disconnect where we were both still connected to the internet but we got kicked from the game so long story short I'm just gonna link to sweet banana gaming's battle she was live recording it we ended up deciding that I won the battle and if you want to go watch it and sort of like decide for yourself I would encourage you to do that the links in the description down below I'm not going to upload the footage she sent me because like I said it's very long it's a different quality it would be hard for me to commentate over it and speeding it up wouldn't make much sense either because there would be periods of it was a long battle like it was like 43 minutes in when the disconnect happened so just go watch her battle if you want to watch it and see the decisions that were made there were some really sweet plays i'm upset that i don't have footage for it i just don't think it would make sense for me to try and react to it and i also don't think it would make sense for me to just upload the footage so go watch her video it's down there we ended up deciding that i won because we were in a position where it would have been very hard for me to lose if that makes sense like I had checks to everything on her team and we were in a like a part of the game where all that had to happen was I had to kill a slow bro. That was really all that had to happen because once that happened I had checks to the rest of her team and the slow bro was very low the turn that the game disconnected. So go watch her battle video. It will explain things there. We ended up deciding that I took a win there. So before even getting into week 10, we're already nine and nine and two. Is that, is that correct math? No. Seven and two? Seven and two would be correct math. Nope. Eight and two. Before week, yep, that would be correct math. Before week 10, we're already eight and two. So uh, we're going to go up against Six Foot Hacks, Coach of the Durham Dread against Leo is an incredible player. Leo's team is bananas good. Just look at what he brought. Look at it. Infernape, Vaporeon, Mega. I was about to say Mega Magirna. That's not a thing. Mega Deonti. <sighs> Scoliopede, Necrozma, Klefki. Like, if this isn't the most busted, annoying team, I don't know what it is, but let's just get into it and react to it. I don't remember uh, much of this battle, kind of like the PLL battles if you watch them. I have no clue. I just need to get this stuff done and upload it. And, yeah. oh man, I'm so bad. It's, I'm so bad at being on time and staying on schedule with things. But I have a full time job and a full time girlfriend, and now I'm just making excuses that you don't care about. Let's just watch this battle. Look, all I know is that I really appreciate it when someone doesn't have the base trainer model. It means you, you put you put some work into your appearance, and that means a lot to me. So anyways, uh, we're going to see Leo leading off with his Infernape here. I led off with Hydreigon. 
we're in a position where if we bluff that we're scarfed, we get him to switch, which is, I guess, what happened here because had he just gone for close combat, it would 100% knock out my Hydreigon. Switching into this thing makes a lot of sense, and I honestly wish I would have stayed in because I have the hidden power ground on this thing just to bop the cleft key. So we switch out into our Igneous here just because it can take most hits from Infernape. Like, it can even take an Earthquake, and it's not super hard. Um, also, the fact that he did switch kind of, like, cues us into the fact that his Infernape is not Scarf. So, good knowledge to have. Um, he goes out into his Mega Deoncy here. We're just going to go for a Lava Plume. This thing is so hard to break through. Like, Mega Deoncy. I mean, Deoncy in its first stage has insane defenses. And then, once it's mega it has Magic Balance, which is great because it can't be toxic. So, you know, just fantastic. And also, it's just really strong. I don't know, man. Mega Deoncy is kind of busted. That's, that's all I'm getting at. Um, we switch into Tangrowth here. He goes for an Earth Power, trying to bop the Torkoal. We switch out into Tangrowth because we know we can eat most special hits. We're in a Salt Vest variant. I, it's the variant I bring most weeks because Salt Vest Tangrowth is actually fantastic. He has to switch here because he takes quite a sizable chunk just from a... Uh, Giga Drain. We go for knockoff. We see that we knock off nothing, so we know this thing is Z-move. We're going to go out into Igneous the Torkoal here because we threaten this thing out under most circumstances. Like, certain Z-moves still have a chance to kill us, but if it's just sort of bug and EMZ or whatever that thing is, like String Shot Blitz Blast, I, I don't actually know what it is. Um, then we're fine. We eat those for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So here, I switch out, making a pretty a pretty bold prediction that he's going to go for a ground Z, and we actually see that that is the case. So we get to bop this thing. Not not really bop it. Like, we don't get to, you know, we don't get to, like, bop the, you know, the Scolipede. We just get a deny him his Z move. It's a pretty good play. It's not bad. Um, it's, it's, it's one of the better plays I make this game, <laughs> if, if that's foretelling. We have to stay in here because actual nothing can take a Megahorn, so... I, I also was hoping maybe he would just make a read and not go for Megahorn, but realistically, he just had to go for it. He had to. Like, there was nothing else he could do, but now that deprives me of my Z Crystal, which means that I don't just get to sort of, like, have something to deal with the Clef Key, and it'd be easy. We're going to go out into our Mega Heracross because we know we can do a sizable amount of damage to this thing. We also eat most of its hits fairly well. He goes for Poison Jab. We know we can eat that. We can take it. And we can crack back with a Rock Blast. The Rock Blast will be able to take this thing out. I'm kind of surprised he didn't switch out trying to save it, but it does make sense. I mean, we've traded one for one, and he's got a ton of extra damage on me. So, um, Also... Heracross doesn't really outspeed anything else on his team. Like, maybe a uh, a prankster clef key if it doesn't have investment. We stay in, hoping that he tries to set up here. And so now we've bopped two of our breakers, like our two wall breakers, mind you. We've lost Heracross, which is a pretty good wall breaker. And we have also lost Hydreigon, which could have switched into this thing. I don't know, man. It was, it was not great. It was not great. Uh, we're in a super rough position already. We go into Jirachi here, just hoping that it stays in and we can go for some Choice Scarf Iron Flinches. This also just kind of like cues in that I'm, I'm Choice Scarf because if I wasn't Choice Scarfed, why would I just be going for these Iron Flinches? So, uh, we end up going out into Toxicology, the Toxapex. This thing has been super clutch for me throughout this entire season. He goes to the Toxic. Which I think is really strange because I was in with Jirachi. I guess he just like knew that I was Scarfed and was going to switch. So we got into Toxpex. We got into this thing and I'm just, <sighs> I'm kind of cringing at this play because I set up Toxic Spikes or tried to set up Toxic Spikes. It doesn't work because they get bounced back because of course they do because of course the thing is Magic Bounce. And of course I'm just making the greatest plays of all time. You know, burn the Z-move, sack off the Hydreigon, <laughs> sack off the Mega Heracross. We're good at this game. He goes out into his Clef Key. Clef Key is pretty annoying. It's pretty hard for us to deal with now because we no longer have Hidden Power Ground. I mean, we can Iron Head it to death. That's not great. I switch out into Jirachi, go back into Toxicology. I'm just trying to absorb my Toxic Spikes because I feel like a pleb that I let them get set up against me in the first place. 
And he goes for spikes. So now we know that he's in, you know, the spike setting mood. Uh, we stay in, hoping that he either switches into the Mega Deontay to bounce my spikes back again, or not stay in with this thing instead of spikes and go for a scald. It does absolutely nothing because Klefki has pretty decent defenses, and if you build it bulky, it's got a really good typing. It's all, it's just very annoying. I love Klefki, by the way. I love Klefki. I hate battling against Klefki. We set up toxic spikes. One layer is good here. Um, there's really no point in sort of like trying to set up all the all the layers of toxic spikes. I don't believe we can also predict him to switch into this thing and try to bounce back the secondary layer. So we get to switch out here. I'm pretty sure we're gonna go into Jirachi because it makes sense. So we make switch out into Jirachi. We're gonna take some spikes damage, but now we are in a position where he kind of has to switch this thing out because it will die to an Iron Head. That's just actual factual. It will die to an Iron Head. He's going to go out into the, I just, his team is so bulky. It's so bulky, but now we have talk spikes on his side of the field. His only defogger potentially is the cleft key. We make the right play this time and we go for the U-turn. So we at least get to have some sort of momentum, but he reveals Rocky helmet, which is also pretty bad for me. Um, I am going to end up going out into Igneous here. Like I said, like I'm reacting to this. I haven't seen this battle in a hot second. I'm going to go out to Igneous here because I know I can live a Scald after the sun is set up and we need to get the spikes off the field. That's just, we, we, we cannot win with spikes still on the field. And we can also sort of like threaten Solar Beam here, which has a potential to chunk of vaporing. I'm having like weird breath issues right now. I can't, I can't catch my breath because I'm trying to talk too fast, man. Just slow it down. Okay, so we take a Scald. We knew we could live it. We go for the Rapid Spin to get rid of the spikes. And now we're in a position where we pretty much just have to let this thing go down. It's not going to do me a great bit of service. I mean, if we can get another attack off with it, that's great. And also, there's a non 0% chance he wants to wish here. Um, at least I'm pretty sure. Oh, actually, I switched out. Huh, go figure. I was pretty sure I let that thing go down right then and there, but I guess I'm wrong, and I don't remember how this game played out at all. So we got into Tangrowth here, knowing that we can eat up the Scald for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We hope we don't get burned here. We do. It's pretty bad because Knockoff actually does a reasonable amount to, uh, to the Necrozma if we're not burned, and now it does almost nothing. Just like actual nothing. He goes for Wish here. That's pretty good because he can just bring something in and put it at full health. We go for Earthquake, just predicting him to switch out. Could have just gone for Giga Drain and killed this thing. I predicted him. I 100% like, I'm not even going to lie. Like, I just predicted him to switch out, but it, it didn't happen. So I think the Infernape was uh, specifically the prediction. He switches out here. He's going to go out into his Mega Deontay. It's going to get Wished right back up the full, but it is poison, so we have that going on for us. I go out into Igneous here, and I remember at some point during this turn, or like the upcoming turns, I remember saying like, I'm really bad at this game. Like I messaged him in Discord, and like I'm really bad at this game. I think it was the turn I tried to Earthquake the Vaporeon, just because I 100% predicted a switch, because Giga Drain would have knocked it out of that range, so. Um, he gets this thing back up the full. That's good for him, and now I'm just right back out, <laughs> right back out into Tangrowth. Um, we can eat up this Moon Blast, but since we're burned, we can't eat up a million Moon Blasts. Like, we can eat up, I think, after burn, it looks like we can eat up three, or eat up two and die in the third one, specifically. So, we know that if we Giga Drain here, it's good for us, and I, like at this point, I just don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm, I'm switching. We could have stayed in and Giga Drained because what is what does this thing do for? What are we doing? That's my whole point. Like, what am I doing? What am I? What am I doing? I'm coming in to live on two with this thing for for what purpose? I, I'm making like all these switches and it doesn't even make sense. I mean, we're getting residual toxic damage, which is good, but my plays make no sense. And then I switch out again. Now, now that I'm sitting here reacting to this, like I'm just mad at myself. I'm frustrated with myself because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I could have just, I could have just giga trained a million turns ago. I mean, I guess it makes sense to get residual poison damage, but I'm annoyed, like with myself right now, currently. What, what, what were you thinking? 
like in in what at what point was this ever a good idea watch i'm gonna go for something stupid like knockoff here predicting him to switch i probably don't i probably just go for giga drain if you don't go for giga drain thank god okay so we go for the giga drain that should be able to knock this thing out after the poison damage i i threw in the after the poison damage because i didn't know if we actually knocked it out or if we knocked it out because of the poison damage <laughs> i'm not gonna lie so that's a massive threat gone my tank growth is still here we have a lot of health so we can switch it out and maintain it if we need but i think at this point I specifically remember thinking this thing doesn't do a ton anymore this thing doesn't do a ton anymore and if we let this thing just set up and we switch for free here it's really bad so i'm gonna stay in i'm gonna go for a knockoff just to get rid of whatever item this thing has because we know this thing is probably like a setup mod at this point just the way he switched it in there because it, it would be really easy to switch in and start setting up so we knock him off it's poisoned, so we're fine. He goes for Sword Dance, and I'm like, that's fine. We have threats at speed. Then he goes for Rock Polish, and I'm like, all right. All right, this is not good. This is really bad. This is so bad. I'm in a really bad spot right now. This is not a fun place to be. I don't have a single thing on my team. I don't believe. I'm pretty sure after running Calx, like, Jirachi does not outspeed this thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I stayed in. I go for the Giga Drain. And now I'm just like, okay, can I live this Photon Geyser on one? Can I live this Photon Geyser on one? Like, I, I just remember, like, thinking to myself, like, can I live it on one? I can't. I don't know why I thought I could. Um, I'm... I remember, like, running calcs and seeing, like, depending on spread, it looked like I could live it, maybe. I go into Igneous here, so now I am really glad that I saved this thing for sort of, like, a Death Fodder Mon. Because it means getting an extra turn of, po like, chip poison damage on this thing. So, you'll see that it actually becomes pretty relevant i don't know if he predicted a switch there or just didn't want to waste photon geysers i would assume the latter because predicting a switch does nothing and the x was guaranteed to kill anyway so this thing has one more turn to live like actual one turn i go out into toxicology here and this is the turn where i think maybe he made a little bit of an over prediction i think he could have just stayed in and gone for photon geyser I'm pretty sure he was predicting me to switch into Jirachi and then have sort of Toxicology as my last Pokemon. Because with Toxicology as my last Pokemon, his team does have a pretty hard time breaking through it. And maybe I should have switched out into Jirachi. Maybe that made more sense. I think, like, looking at it now, it 100% does. But still, at the same time, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I it's definitely, like, if we're comparing uh, sort of, like, the rate of plays here... Leo has been out playing me this entire game. And I'm not trying to say like I one up them by springing in my Tox effects and then not switching it out because I don't know. Maybe I would have lived the Photon Geyser. I mean, I resist it 4x and he couldn't just like go for. Yeah, I, I guess it makes it makes a lot of sense now that I'm thinking about it. I don't know. I don't know. It was, it was a weird sequence. It was a weird sequence. And I'm not trying to say like I made the correct play or Leo made the correct play or who made the incorrect play. It was just a weird, it was definitely a weird sequence. So anyways, uh, we ended up scalding this thing. It, it's burned. And I think at this point, it's revealed that it has like actual zero damaging moves. Like he can set up reflex and light screens and spikes. And why am I yawning? I've had, I can't, I need to be able to, you know, keep, keep talking. Whew. All right. Uh, and now we have this thing to where it's dead. Two more burns or also just another iron head. He sets up a light screen. That's really good. He's light screened and he's reflected. We can assume he's light clay. We'll never know. I don't think what his last move was. We know he had spikes and screens. I, I'm assuming play rough maybe, but eh, not 100%. He goes down to Infernape. We die to this thing. We know that much. And honestly, if, if I can just like warn you a little bit, we're getting to a point of the game, which was... Yeah. Not my proudest moment. Not not my proudest moment. <laughs> uh, he goes for a... I believe that was Vacuum Wave, right? Or is it Mock Punch? Vacuum Wave. All right. So he goes for a Vacuum Wave here because he knows we're scarfed at this point. He gets priority. So he gets to take me out in two hits and only get damaged by one Iron Head. Makes a lot of sense. Like, risking flinches here is really bad. Also, like, if he just didn't have priority and I flinched him down, it would be you know really really bad for him we go into toxicology his reflect wears off so i guess maybe he didn't even have a uh, light clay I, I don't really know leo sets are 
really good and I can't ever I can't even begin to tell you what it was this thing goes for earthquake I know I have to click recover here because if I live the earthquake and I recover then I know we're in good territory so we live the earthquake recover we know we're in good territory and this is sort of what I mean by this was not my proudest moment because and this is just a forewarning I'm pretty sure that the next six turns are me clicking recover I'm like pretty sure I'm pretty certain that the next six turns are me clicking recover. So it goes for earthquake. Um, I'm going to click recover <laughs> because I have to be at full health or as close to full as I can get whenever the necrozma comes in. Because if I'm not, I just die to a photon geyser. So I click recover. It really, the only way I throw this game, in, in my opinion, like at this point, is by not clicking recover. Because the Vaporeon is also at an amount of health where it'll just die to the next uh, poison damage. And so is Necrozma. So we kill the Infernape by clicking recover twice. So I guess it's maybe not the next six turns, but the next four turns. Because I have to click recover here as well. Um, just because like I can't I can't risk anything. Had he got a crit here or just actual anything, we died. I was also a very physically defensive Toxapex this week, which is why we lived that pretty convincingly. Um, we click recover. You know, part of the course. This is competitive Pokemon at its finest. It's this is a high skill cap strategy right now. Set up toxic spikes and then click recover. Like I, I feel really bad about it. I'm not gonna lie. Like it was not it was not my most shining moment, but it was my win condition. So I had to do it. I mean we're still trying to win games, right? I I'm just saying. Like I, I felt bad about it and I even sent him like GG's after the Jirachi died. Like, once he vacuum waves twice, I sent GG's because I was, like, pretty sure that two Earthquakes would be able to just, like, knock out my Tox Specs, and it wouldn't matter. Um, he goes for Scald. He gets the burn. It doesn't matter. We click Recover and go up to actual full, and he dies to the poison. So, like I said, not my proudest moment, but it's, it's how this game <laughs> went. So... If you think I'm a scumbag, go ahead and click that like button because it would mean the absolute most to me and it would let me know that you like me even though I'm a scumbag. <laughs> also, if you're new here, go ahead and click that subscribe button because sometimes I'm not a scumbag and we don't make bad plays and rely on toxic spikes and recover to win games, but I mean, sometimes we do. So if you're keeping track, uh, since I got the forfeit win, it wasn't a forfeit, since I won by like means of discussion and working things out with Sweet Banana because basically like... We battled, then I had to go somewhere. So I won that game. I won over Leo with a very close 1-0 in a game that I'm not super proud of. And then week 12 of the PGBL was just a forfeit. I, I don't know what happened. Root reached out to me and asked if I'd already battled the guy. I said no, and he said, don't worry about it. So I don't know what happened to him. I hope all is well. I, I, like I said, like I just don't know. Um, so that's that. We end this league with a grand total of, uh, what are we? Let's see. We're eight and two, ten and two. Ten and two is our record at the end of this league. Because this is gonna be the last battle for playoffs. Playoffs start um the 24th. They get uploaded the 24th. So not this upcoming weekend, but the next weekend. So you look forward to that. We go into playoffs at the number one seed. We're trying to defend our title because if you don't know, we won the PGBL season one. Um I'm I'm really proud of my performance this season, I'm not gonna lie. I know my team is very bulky. It's it's kind of like, I don't want to say it's like easy to play with the Regenerator core like Toxpex Tangrowth, um, but it's definitely made a lot of the mistakes I've made cost me less. Like I can make a mistake, but then I still have these like two bulky walls that can just take hits and fall back on. Um, he, I'll, I'll talk about this all later. Whew. All right, the moral of the story is great game, Leo. I'm sorry that the game came down to that. It was kind of, the end was frustrating. I'm sure it was for you as well. The link to Leo's battle will be in the description down below. This battle is very late. He's already posted it, but go give it a nice little view bump. Click the like button. Say I sent you there. Also, go to his comment section and call me scum, and hopefully he'll heart that comment. Uh, subscribe to him if you haven't already. Subscribe to me. Comment on my videos. Like my videos. I, I filmed a vlog earlier this week. I should be posting that soon. Do you care? I hope so. All right. It's been it's been nice talking to you. You know, it was nice feeling really stressed about this so just plowing through it to get it done you know sometimes you just need that extra boost of stress to make you want to die all right i'm kind of done here and i gotta leave but i love you bye so tell me something.